Port Tom Furley. Let's stay with <clears throat> Auckland because the city is likely to see change no matter who wins this year's election. Yesterday, of course, National and Labour showcasing their competing transport packages. Housing and immigration, of course, also high up on the party's agendas, but it was the transport to, uh, policies which were the focus over the weekend. The Mayor of Auckland is Phil Goff. He joins me now in the Auckland studio. Good morning. Morning, Guy. Uh, you must be happy with this. A lot of focus on your city. <clears throat> I said jokingly we should have an election every year. <laughs> Um, Look, I think both policies uh, were very positive for Auckland. Um, Obviously approve uh, of electrification to Pukekohe uh, and the third main trunk line. Uh, I thought the uh, statement earlier in the week by by National that they would lift the ATAP fund to $27 That's what I've been discussing with them for months now. And that they need to bring that program forward to take into account that you know we'll get the population by 2021 that we weren't expecting until 225. So mm. national policy I think was uh, solid uh, and sound and Labour's policy I think was was bold and positive too. Um, obviously you know at the last election as you'll recall uh, in the uh, in the mayoral campaign uh, I was promoting light rail and I was promoting a broader revenue base for government uh, for, for local government to be able to put our skin in the game so that Auckland is making a contribution to its own needs. Yeah, and this is where the, well, rubber hits the road really, isn't yeah. it? It's, it's who's going to pay for it. And under mm. Labor's plan, there'd be a possibly a 10 cents a litre regional fuel tax. Do you think Aucklanders are prepared to wear that? Yeah, look, I went through the last mayoral campaign saying something very unusual for a candidate, and that was if we're to solve our congestion problem and it's getting worse and worse, then we're going to, not, you get nothing for nothing. Uh, we're going to have to make a contribution. Yes, I expect central government to play a bigger role, and, and I think they will, but we as Aucklanders will have to contribute as well. So I said to people out on the campaign trail, look, um, you know, I'm talking about a, a, a road pricing system, a fuel tax. If you don't think you need a big investment in, in infrastructure and you don't want to pay for it, well, probably better not vote for me because we're going to have to make a contribution. And when you look at Nationals policy, it, it's it's not really that much uh, different. I'm, I'm setting up, uh, I've got a group set up uh, between ourselves and government looking at uh, smarter road pricing. It's looking at congestion tax. Now, my only problem with that, I, I think that's logical. We have to have demand management in this to, to solve the problem. But my only problem with that is that may be five or six years out. And what do we do in the meantime? Because we've already agreed <clears throat> we're going to bring the Auckland uh, transport alignment project forward, there's a seven, you know, maybe six or seven billion dollar deficit there. It's got to be paid for. Yeah, the issue partly with the fuel tax, so too, is it, and especially for mm. a, a Labour Party, I, w- I would argue, is it's a regressive tax in a way. I mean, you're asking people no. to pay 10 cents a litre. If, if I'm um, in, in quite poor circumstances and using the car to get to work, then I might get pretty hammered by uh, by a 10 cents a litre f- fuel tax and you'd pay that regardless of your income. So it's got a it's got a regressive effect, right? No, no, I, I don't believe it is regressive. In fact, I think you'd find that the commercial sector is paying a much larger percentage of uh, towards transport infrastructure than it certainly is under the interim transport levy, uh, which is, uh, you know, the 4% increase in rates that was put on for a, for a period of time. Uh, I'm very conscious of the need for people, particularly in the south, but also in the west and in other parts of the city, actually. <clears throat> They've got to get to work and they're being forced further and further out into the suburbs. That's where they can afford to stay. How do they get in uh, in a cost-effective way? Well, that's why I think light rail will make a big difference. If you've got light rail through Mount Roskill, Onihanga, uh, 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 through Mangari yeah, and but, through to Otara, that gives Bill working English, people an alternative. Bill English says it's not a priority at the moment. I... I sense from the government, actually, that they are moving more quickly towards a a, a light rail solution, you know. Oh, really? So uh, you think there'll be more to come from them in the campaign? Look, look, I hope so. We've been having good discussions, and I can't, and and I won't preempt those discussions, but, you know, we've been looking at, what do you do about Simon Street when you've got 150 or more buses an hour? We've moved to double-decker, so we've increased capacity, but we're at bus congestion. We know that we've got to address that problem. We know we've got APEC, and we've got the America's Cup coming here in 2021. We're going to showcase New Zealand to the world. It's not a great showcase if we're, if we're gridlocked and we can't get around our own city. So, look, I had detected, you know, uh, a flexibility with the government that they are ready to consider new ideas. And I'm working constructively with them, as I would with anyone uh, in government. And equally, I welcome the fact that a number of political parties have, have come out with policies that show, maybe for the first time, that they recognise how important it is 
that we don't keep losing $2 billion a year in lost productivity, which is a loss not simply to Auckland, but to the whole country. So, you know, everybody in New Zealand has got a vested interest in Auckland being able to work for New Zealand. Before you go, um, you were the Labour leader once. Um, you'd be looking... <laughs> you'd, After that job, anything was easy. Uh, you'd be looking across at the last week, you know, and uh, what were your thoughts? I'd be interested to know. I mean... It was tough for you and for the others that followed you. And now you see, you know, the sort of reception Mm. that Jacinda Ardern's getting. What are your thoughts? Well, it's been a pretty remarkable week in politics. And, uh, you know, I suppose everybody's looking to see how uh, that change might convert into the polling. Uh, And, you know, what I was at a, a business meeting the other day and, you know, the mood at that meeting was, well, this makes the election a whole lot more interesting and it makes it a closer race. And, you know, as an observer now, rather than a participant in the arena in in central government, you know, I I think both of those observations are right. I think uh, it is, uh, you know, it's a a real competition. You weren't looking across saying, oh, that should be me? No, no, hell no. I've I've left that behind me. And, uh, you know, look, I'm I've got I've got a great job. It's called Mayor of Auckland. It, it's turned my hair a bit greyer than it was before. Happening to you too, Guy. Um, but but it, it's still di- a great you job. You never dyed your hair, did you? <laughs> I won't, won't oh. go there, mate. It's uh, <laughs> it's all about transition, isn't it? All right, good on you. Thanks for coming in this morning. Uh, thanks, That's Guy. the Auckland Mayor Phil Goff. It's twenty three past eight. Let's uh, stay in Auckland. Actually, with the traffic news, there's been a breakdown on the Harbour Bridge. Bound. It's heavy between Princess Street and the southeastern on ramp. Uh, obviously, delays in that area as well. Now, westbound on the northwestern motorway this morning, there was an earlier uh, multi vehicle crash slow between Teatatu Road and the Lincoln on ramp. Emergency services attending that crash site. Well, it's 24 minutes past eight on morning reports. And as you heard last hour, the Opportunities Party has released a policy that it says will reform the Tenancy Act and prevent landlords from being able to evict tenants when they sell a property. It also plans to gift all state housing to not-for-profit community housing providers and use the profits from the emission trading scheme to improve insulation in state houses. Andrew King's the head of the Property Investors Federation. He's with us now. Morning. Good morning. 